great game here. Manchester United 2, VRL 1. Viva! <laughs> Viva Ronaldo indeed. Viva Ronaldo indeed. Manchester United 2, Villarreal 1. We did not deserve to win that game. Come on, we all know that. But I don't give a fuck. Viva Ronaldo popping up. What was that, his fifth goal? I don't care how many goals he scored. Ronaldo, again, the man, the moment we needed him. Why did we need him there? And he came up with the goods. What's your reaction to that? You let me know in the comments below. But, oh, my God. I am. Oh, this is going to be a bit of a mad match reaction to. I'll be honest, because I was coming in full of frustration. But that's just been exploded out of me. <laughs> Not like that. Although, maybe, actually. Ronaldo there. Lingard. Hell, yeah. Ronaldo. Hell, yeah. United coming up with the goods. And I told you, man. This would happen. When United go down, the mini boom bust cycle continues, and Jesus Christ, it continued in that game as well. Ooh, we were crap for the majority of it. Villarreal could have scored like four goals in that first half. Easily. They didn't, thankfully. Uh, De Gea made a couple of brilliant saves. United switched up that whole formation, but Tomine there. Oh, who gives a shit about that all, man? Viva Ronaldo. The man who is finished, Mr. Champions League, coming up in our first Champions League game back at Old Trafford in 18 months. Fergie's there smiling with Usain Bolt. <laughs> I don't know why Usain Bolt's there, but I don't care. He enjoyed it. I'm sure he did. I'm sure Fergie did. I'm sure every single one of those fans inside Old Trafford did. As I said, I was coming into this match reaction full of frustration. It was a game where we saw the same patterns emerge. Manchester United not controlling the midfield. No real link-up play from the team. What were we doing? The problems were there. The defensive shambles. Diogo Dalot, you have just shown me exactly why I love Aaron Wan-Bissaka so much. And I don't want to hear any more slander against Aaron Wan-Bissaka and his lack of ability to go forward. You want that instead? No, you don't. Diogo Dalot really... Really didn't do himself any favours today. I would say culpable, at least in part, for both for the majority of Villarreal's main chances. But Man United there coming up when we needed to. Fire going to Solskjaer. And this is exactly what I said would happen, man. The mini boom bust cycle continues. When, the back, when our backs are against the wall, the team responds. And I'll tell you what, it's at this point where I'm actually really frustrated, actually, at how Man United are so much better when we go 1-0 down. Fucking get that mentality out of your head, people. That's a good habit to have. Don't make that the constant mentality that you that you need to sort of start playing ball. Because as soon as that happened, I'll tell you what, the subs again today, questionably late, but you can't really question them when the result comes your way. Uh, we switched with Matic coming on for Paul Pogba, so we went to a two and we went Cavani up front. How the hell did Cavani miss that header from Greenwood's cross? Unbelievable cross from Greenwood. I have no idea how that didn't go in. I was going to accuse Cavani of match fixing. That's how much I thought that was going in. But <laughs> it doesn't matter because Ronaldo came up with the goods. And look at the smile on my face. You better have the same goddamn smile on your face. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that are frustrated with the same problems that we saw inside that game that we, that we have seen. Uh, against uh, Aston Villa that we've seen against West Ham in the League Cup that we saw against Young Boys away. And you're spot on. There are issues. For me, I've said this before and I'll say it again and I'll say it next week in a video. Coaching. Coaching is a massive issue at Manchester United. Even with the different defenders, even with different formation, even with a different style, same problems. Defensively, an absolute fucking shambles, if I'm being honest, in that first half. Delot was just overloaded. He wasn't getting double. He was getting doubled up on. What we should have had was maybe we couldn't have McTominay dropping deeper because we were playing with one holding midfielder. Scott McTominay, judging by that performance, by the way, he's not a holding midfielder, nor would he ever be for Manchester United. Uh, really didn't. Re if anything, he was in the wrong position at all times across the whole pitch rather than being in the right spot at the right times. But I'll tell you who was there at the right spot at the right time. Viva Ronaldo came up with the winner. Woo! Oh, we needed that, eh? We needed that. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needed that. That would, if if that goal had not gone in, that would have been an extremely tense um, press conference post the game. It would have been an extremely tense few days in the press, and the narrative now completely changes. Of course, we can't get too g'd up. I can't get too. We can't ignore the game that we just watched. There were huge problems still there. Ultimately. We came up with the three points and the result is what matters. And that moment there, Old Trafford deserved it. The fans inside there deserved it. First game in the Champions League in 18 months. Ronaldo coming back to Old Trafford. He looked a bit 
shoddy tonight, didn't he? He looked a bit static. He looked a bit down and out. That's why you don't take Ronaldo off. And that's probably why so many people were pissed off that he got taken off against West Ham. But then Lingard came up with the goal. And then Lingard tonight coming up with the assist. Lingard, purple patch Jesse continues. That's what I want to see. Oh, man. Oh, what a, what a relief that is. And that's, that, that's all that goal is from United. Remember that. And I'm not here trying to piss on your chips. Remember that. It is a relief because ultimately that was a game where Villarreal, you would argue they deserved it over the over the 90-minute period. They had the better chances. They had plenty of chances that they missed. Real big two-on-one chance. But then Cavani had his chance too. So it's not as if United didn't have their chances. But Ronaldo coming up with the goods when Solskjaer needed him to. Big moment, that is. But United have to make sure that this is the fucking beginning of something better and something new and not the beginning of the, the same cycle that we've seen like three times when Solskjaer's job has been questioned at United. At that point, it's, it's a predictable pattern. It's almost as predictable as Manchester United playing better when we're 1-0 down. Get rid of that goddamn habit. Hold it in the locker for when we do go 1-0 down, but don't make it your go-to, which is Man United's go-to at the moment. Oh, I've lost my word. I've lost my words. I've lost my way. I don't care. Viva Ronaldo. Viva Ronaldo. Viva Ronaldo. I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned, but Viva Ronaldo. Sue! I've been whacking a Sue in there. You caught one. I probably sounded like an angry pigeon there, but I don't really care. I don't care, man. There's so much toxicity, and I don't like toxicity inside United's fan base. So many people. I don't know. It's it, it's it's just sometimes it's at the moment it's it's not the best of places to be and to report on, which is what I'm doing. Uh, and I fucking loved the fact that that goal went in. I loved the celebrations. I loved it. You saw how much it meant to everybody. But United, man, this squad's way too good to just be a mini boom bust cycle team. This squad deserves better, deserves trophies, deserves silverware. And we have to try and turn this into momentum that shifts us in the right direction. We can't then go and lose or draw against Everton. But, you know, it's going to be a tough game against Everton. We've got an international break coming up. And then we have to buckle up because the season truly begins. Leicester away. We've got uh, Spurs away as well, I think. And Liverpool at home. And then we've got Atalanta, double header. And now we're top of the Champions League group with them because they won tonight. Oh, thank you, Ronaldo, for coming up with the goods when we needed you the most there. Absolutely. Viva Ronaldo. Champions League Ronaldo. Champions League Varane. Ooh, horror mistake from him today. Jeez, he didn't look, he didn't really look at the races, but you can't really blame him, I suppose, because it was a back four where there was three of them changed. So obviously United with defensive, you're going to be a bit shoddy tonight. Boy, oh, Jesus. Woo. Woo. Yes, man. Yes. I, what, what's what you fucking love last minute winners. There is nothing better in football than a last minute winner like that. Mwah. 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 All sorts of kisses. Viva Ronaldo. United there. As I said, more of a relief than a than a triumphant glory that game was. We should have lost over the over the course of the game. They had better chances, but we came up with a goal right at the end with Ronaldo. Hell yeah. Solskjaer needed that. Let's buckle up. Let's go back into the dressing room. Let's actually change shit. Let's the same issues there. The, a, a, a lot of lack of Link up play. McTominay didn't really work in that position, did it? Too much space, way too much space in terms of offensively. And that's why Solskjaer likes and trusts Fred and McTominay because it gives that extra screening, even if it takes away from going forward. But United 2, Villarreal 1. I'm going to start repeating myself now. That's what happens when Ronaldo crops up with the last minute winner. Solskjaer needed it. We all needed it. Drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. But Viva Ronaldo!